So I've known I've wanted to be a parent since I was nine years old. Mother and motherhood never felt appropriate, so I wasn't actively trying to get pregnant. I gave birth to Wilder at home, but I also gave birth to myself. Wilder's birth was so calm and grounding and beautiful and powerful that it really showed me what I'm capable of. We want to extend a huge thank you to Nanit and Dame for bringing this episode of What's Underneath Birth and Postpartum to life. Stay tuned to the end of the episode to learn more about our partners and the special offers they have for you. So can you talk a little bit about what your style says about you? I'm a new parent in postpartum, uh, and so my style isn't what it used to be. About a few years before I had um, gotten pregnant with Wilder, I had started really becoming more comfortable and at home in my body. And I had started and finding- your style? Yeah, I found my style. And so I'm really grieving that style, right? I would wear suspenders and button downs at home because it made me feel good. I'm grieving the ability to do that because the body, my body doesn't fit the mold that our society creates and cuts its clothing from. It doesn't fit the mold of having a baby. Right, yeah, having a baby while shopping in the men's department. I have this love for my body, especially going through that pregnancy process as a non-binary person, post-medically transitioning. That really allowed for me to be a home for Wilder. And then I had Wilder and postpartum depression and psychosis have really crept in and changed that relationship. It's, 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 um, it's covered it up in some ways, so I've just been slowly trying to uncover that self-love again that I had for my body while I was pregnant. Can you talk about assumptions that people make about you based on your appearance? Oftentimes people assume that I am a cis gay man, and it's never assumed that I gave birth to my baby. And it's always assumed that I am Wilder's father, which I am, but that um, Wilder has a mother, which they do not. But then also there's this really big sense of feeling unseen. Like I understand what, what mothers go through, the postpartum experience. And so um, oftentimes I feel unseen in that sense. And when you were pregnant, what were those assumptions? The assumption that I got the most was that Wilder was planned and that I used a donor, which was not the case. But the other assumption that most people made is that it would cause and trigger a whole lot of gender dysphoria, which it didn't, it did the opposite. It created um, gender euphoria in a way that I've never experienced before. I still, like when I look down at my tummy, I'm like, this is like home. This is my child's first home, and it reminds me now. I'm like, wow, in order for Wilder to, to learn how to love their body, I get to learn how to love mine. So can you talk a little bit about your journey to becoming a dad? Yeah, so I've known I've wanted to be a parent since I was nine years old. Mother and motherhood never felt appropriate, so I wasn't actively trying to get pregnant. And Wilder is the result of a relapse. From the age of six to 12, I experienced sexual abuse from a family member. That experience has led, led me down a really dark path. A lot of the way that my addiction and my disease played out was reliving that trauma, allowing people, specifically men, to use my body. Like, I'm a survivor of bullying. Um, I grew up in a really small town in the Midwest, and I came out as a lesbian at the age of 12 years old. So I experienced a lot of bullying, specifically from the boys. Between that and my sexual abuse, I had a very negative connotation of boys. I didn't want to be a boy. I never felt connected to the identity of being a woman, but I absolutely never felt connected to being a man. It didn't occur to me until I was 25 years old that I could be neither, or I could be both, um, that I was non-binary. Prior to transitioning, I had only ever been attracted to women. And then I transitioned and I started to have this attraction towards men, but I also still acted out in my disease in this way that was really, really unhealthy um, with men. And so I had this like weird, conflict. One of the consequences from my final relapse uh, was conceiving Wilder, and I've been sober ever since. What happened to you then, being sober and being pregnant? So I ended up getting COVID in March of 2020, right at the beginning of the pandemic, and I got really, really sick for a month. I started to get better, and within a week I started to get really, really sick again, and so I went back to the hospital. 
And I described my symptoms and they're like, is there a possibility that you could be pregnant? And sure enough, there was. What was your pregnancy like? It was terrible. It was horrible. Yeah. It was hard. I went to the emergency room five different times during the pandemic alone as a pregnant trans person. Uh, I had some really negative experiences, like doctors refusing to believe that I was pregnant and not asking me questions directly, snickering about me well in the room with me. So how did you cope? I cared for my body, I cared for my child. The self-love and the things that Wilder has taught me through carrying them and, and being pregnant, um, that's what helps me stay sober every day. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about then the birth and all? My birth was the exact opposite from my pregnancy journey. My birth was absolutely amazing. It was a spiritual experience. I gave birth to Wilder at home, but I also gave birth to myself. Wilder's birth was so calm and grounding and beautiful and powerful that it really showed me what I'm capable of. So let's hear about your journey, you know, postpartum journey. So at six months postpartum, I decided to restart my testosterone. I went off of it for two months before I conceived Wilder and I was off of it for the duration of my pregnancy and up until six months postpartum. Um, and I went back on it and that's also around the time that I started noticing an increase in my anxiety and my depression. And after being on testosterone for a month, I thought that the two were connected. And so I stopped testosterone without talking to my, my doctor, I just stopped it. But those feelings of anxiety and depression kept getting worse and other things started happening. Around 11 months is when the intrusive thoughts really started creeping in. You were having thoughts about harming Yeah, so I was having intrusive thoughts about harming my child. This person who I love more than anything in the entire world, how could I be having those thoughts about this person who I've never, I've never loved anything or anyone more than this being? And I reached out to a friend, thank goodness, and so she came and got me and I went to the hospital. And I received diagnosis and medication for postpartum psychosis and depression, as well as ADHD. So when I got out of the hospital, I went home, but um, things were very different. While they had their own room and sleeps in their own room. One of the things that I changed is going back on testosterone because after talking with my doctor, we came to the realization that it probably wasn't the testosterone that was causing those things. It was the postpartum depression and psychosis. I'm noticing like my facial hair is coming in, my voice is starting to drop again. So um, I'm noticing some of those things that bring some comfort, some gender euphoria are starting to fall back into place now that I'm on the testosterone and it's really helping. So in the last six months, I've really been skyrocketed into this, this path of healing. That's looked like having a therapist. That's looked like having medication that I take on a regular basis. And it's been profound. It's been amazing. I no longer experience the symptoms that I was experiencing six months ago, which I feel absolutely blessed for. The biggest thing is I'm taking care of myself just as I would my baby because I knew. I knew that if I wanted to show up as the parent that I've always dreamed of being, that I knew that I can be, that I had to change things. As a dad, what makes you feel the most vulnerable? I think one of the ways that I feel the most vulnerable with, with Wilder and, and as they grow is showing them that they're not alone in the world, that there are a lot of seahorse babies. I get emotional thinking about it because there's this really big, beautiful, vibrant community of trans and non-binary people who have carried and given birth. What advice would you give your pre-father self? Be ready to make mistakes. And that it's okay to make mistakes. And that a postpartum plan is as if not more important than a birth plan. My advice would have been to create even more support for myself in my postpartum journey than as I did in my birth, birth process. What is your favorite part of your body? I love my hands. As an addict, I have the responsibility to lend a hand to other addicts and alcoholics in need. Um, so they're also a form of connection. Yeah, my hands. So how do you feel about the parts of your body that have changed from pregnancy? Oh gosh, this, so like at the beginning is like, what is all of this extra stuff on me? And then I realized like actually like this tummy here, like this is the tummy that housed my baby. And how can I not love a body that is home for somebody else? And what is the greatest gift that Wilder has given you? Self-love.
1,000% has been self-love. I have a dimple chin that people used to call a butt chin, and I used to hate it. And then I gave birth to this baby who has the most delicious dimple chin I've ever seen. And all of a sudden, I love my dimple chin. For the first time in my life, I love my dimple chin. That's the kind of self-love that Wilder has taught me. Why in your body, in your journey, in, in your skin, why is it a good place to be? Because it's soft and it's comforting and it's welcoming. I'm exactly who I'm meant to be. I wanted to give birth as a papa, as, as a dad, because I wanted to feel at home in my body. Because the more insecurity that I feel, that energy my child is going to pick up on. The more comforted, at home, safe in my body that I feel, that's going to allow me to be more of that for my child. So I knew that, yeah, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to chest feed my child. But you know what? Wilder has had donor milk for 16 months, has been fed breast milk from other people's bodies, even though I haven't been able to produce. And that's okay. It hasn't impacted my connection with Wilder in any way, but it's impacted my connection with myself. Giving birth in my correct gender identity and the place that feels most right and at home for me was the best path to take and was the way that I wanted to give birth. Regardless of what society says, right? I needed to feel as grounded and at home in my body as possible and that is as my non-binary self. Beautiful. Thank you so much. That was really, really beautiful. We did, I mean, whoa. We want to extend a huge thank you to Nanit and Dame for bringing this episode of What's Underneath Birth and Postpartum to Life. Nanit is the company behind the world's smartest baby monitor that's helping parents and babies sleep better than ever. It would have been amazing to wander around and do what I had to do when you were taking a nap instead of anxiously having to constantly check on you. Nanit's monitors keep parents in tune with their baby's sleep, breathing, growth and well-being. And with real-time alerts, parents can get the reassurance that they need to have a better night's sleep. And parents can find support, advice, and member discounts by joining the Nanit community. Mom? Yes, Liz? Did you know that women are four times more likely than men to say that sex has not been pleasurable for them at all in the last year? I am not surprised at all and would think that the number would actually be higher. That's where Dame comes in, a leading sexual wellness company that's creating game-changing pleasure products for people with vulvas to help bring your coupled or solo play to the next level. Being a mother has shown me the importance of drawing boundaries and getting my needs met. The most important lesson of all is that when you're happy, your kids are happy. All Dame products are thoughtfully engineered and are designed for you so that you can bring your solo or coupled play to the next level. Because new parents deserve to feel sexy too. Right, Mom? Yes. Absolutely, Lils. <laughs> if you're interested in getting Dame today, use code STYLE like you to get 15% off your first order. Follow Nanit on Instagram and TikTok and check out their sale at www.nanit.com where you can buy now or add to a registry for the sale to apply.